I had a student one time who went to study in Thailand. And the teacher over there found out that she'd been doing the John Lee method, working with the breath, adjusting the breath. And he said to her, the breath is a fabrication. Why would you adjust it? Aren't you just supposed to let it go? She didn't know what to say. She reported it to me later. And I must admit, I probably would not have done well as a student of that teacher, because I would have said, well, your body's a fabrication. Why do you bathe it? We have these fabrications in the mind. We have these fabrications in the body. What the Buddha is teaching us is how to turn them into a path. And you do that by adjusting them, by fixing them. In terms of the body, we get more skillful in our behavior, more mindful in our behavior, being very careful not to harm anybody. It starts with the precepts and then goes to other more refined things. And as you get to the more refined things, it starts going into the mind, because the mind has to be adjusted as well. We have to adjust our attitudes, adjust, adjust our views. You think of that image of the raft going across the river. What is the raft made of? It's made of the twigs and branches on this side of the river. In other words, the things we already have here. As with concentration, direct a thought and evaluation. Many of the times when people ask, how do I start doing direct a thought and evaluation? I tell them, well, you're already doing it. You've probably been doing it all the time ever since you learned how to talk. It's basically the mind's inner conversation. So you take that inner conversation and you turn it into a good thing. Focusing on the breath, focusing on the mind's relationship to the breath, trying to adjust them so they get along together. And then you can drop that conversation and just be with the sensation of the breathing. It's not that the conversation is bad, it's actually useful to get you there, but once it's gotten you where you want to go, in other words, to higher levels of concentration, then you put it aside. So many of the things in the path are like that. But the important thing is, it is something that we have to put together. It doesn't happen naturally. What's natural is for people to engage in greed, aversion, and delusion. What's natural is for people to be careless in their behavior. That's all very natural. We want something that's better than natural. We want a way out of the suffering that we've been causing ourselves and we've been causing other people. And this is how we do it. We take what we've already got and we turn it into something good. That, as John Fung used to say, is a sign of a person of real discernment. Take things that are not good and you turn them into something good. That's how you learn about them, and ultimately how you can go beyond them. <laughs>